I know it's confusing. Cross products uh, and magnetic fields are, are a problem. But I'm going to try to explain to you how it works. I'm going to try to explain to you the right-hand rule uh, because that's something that you're going to need. And, and this is, I'm focusing this more on conceptual level. I'm not going to do a lot of calculations. I really just want to work on this, right? This is the right-hand rule. Also, you've seen it as this. You've seen this. Um, so let's just get started with the cross product. Uh, I, and, and this is, if you're, if you're an algebra-based physics student, I mean, this is really kind of a lot, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So a vector is uh, a quantity that has essentially three components, right? So you have an x, y, and z component. So it's a it's an arrow in three dimensions. Uh, you can't multiply vectors by each other because multiplication is reserved for uh, scalar quantities. But there are two uh, operations that you can do. One is the cross product. So if I have the vector a and the vector b, I can say the vector c is a cross, and we use the, the time symbol, a cross b. Uh, there's also the dot product. You could say uh, s equals a dot b, and this return, this is a, an operation that returns a scalar value. You use this when you do work and electric potential and stuff like that. Uh, and the cross product returns a vector value. Now, there are some important properties of this uh, you can calculate this vector exactly if you know the components, but most of the time you're going to do something like this. You'll say, oh, I know the magnitude of the vector C is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. That's where that's theta. So if you know the angle between them and the magnitude, you can find the magnitude of the resultant. That's usually what you do. And a lot of times you'll have this angle is 90 degrees, so it makes it easier. But not always, but sometimes. So, but the question is then, if you can calculate this magnitude of the vector C, how do you find the direction? And that's where the right-hand rule comes in. And that's where I'm going to explain these equations uh, and how they deal with the right-hand rule because they're all a little bit different. And, and everyone presents them a little bit different way. But they all definitely use your right hand. This is my right hand. Okay, so the, this is the magnitude of the vector C, A cross B. The direction is the direction of the vector C is such that it's perpendicular to A and perpendicular to B. It has to be perpendicular to both of those vectors. And so you see if this, if I have A and B in this flat plane of the paper, then there is no vector that's perpendicular to both of them, right? Because if I draw a vector like this, that's perpendicular to A, it's not perpendicular to B. If I draw a vector like this, it's perpendicular to B, but it's not perpendicular to A. They can't be perpendicular to both. Even if these two are 90 degrees, it won't work. Okay, so that means that the resultant vector has to be in the third dimension. So this is inherently a three-dimensional problem. You cannot do two-dimensional cross products. So there's actually two vectors. There's only two. There are only two vectors that's perpendicular to the vector A and perpendicular to the vector B. I'm going to show you what they are. I'm going to use this little paper clip just because it is hard to do in three dimensions. So here's one of them. So here's an arrow. See that? It's pointing straight up. See, it's pointing straight up. So straight up perpendicular to the paper, out of the paper. So you notice right here, this vector is perpendicular to A. I know you can't see it, and I'm cool with that. I'll show you another version in just a second. Uh, and it is perpendicular to B. So it's perpendicular to both. Now, the other one looks like this. Well, it goes through the paper. It goes into the paper, right? I tried to make it. I was trying to be cool, and that didn't work. Okay. So there's two vectors, either out of the paper or into the paper, that's perpendicular to both A or B. And how do you know which one? That's where the right-hand rule comes in. So one of the most important things about the right-hand rule is that if you're writing and you're right-handed, put down the pen. Put down the pencil. You can't do the right-hand rule if you have a pencil in your hand. Okay. So, so put it down. And that's what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do, oh, I'm writing, and I'm going to use the right-hand rule. But big surprise, this is your left hand. So don't use that one. If you're left-handed, which I'm not, then don't put down the pencil. Okay. So the right-hand rule says that which I get to pick which vector is the vector resultant. And it's the one where the fingers of my right hand cross through vector A and then B, because the order does matter here. So this is A cross B. So if I do this, 
you notice that my thumb will point in the direction up out of the paper. So that would be a B cross A. So it crosses through B first, right? So it's not this way. If I do it this way, it's going to cross through A and then B. And be careful not to hurt yourself. Okay, so, so the answer is that A cross B is into the paper. Now we actually have a way to represent this in two dimensions. Uh, we represent it like this. The vector C is that. Uh, so this is a vector going into the paper. Think of it as an arrow, and you're looking at the, the feathers on the back of the arrow. If it was like this, something like that, that would be a vector coming out of the page, and you're just seeing the point. So, and this would actually be, uh, if that's the same vector A, and that's the same vector B, and this is the vector D, where D is B cross A. It's in the opposite direction. Because now if I do B cross A, you see. Okay, so that's that's the, the way you do crossplex. And let me, I did have a, a prop here. Oh, here it is. I made this. I know it, it doesn't show up very well, but this is, uh, this is, I made this out of Lego. Can you tell this made out of Lego? Uh, but the important thing is that these are three vectors that are perpendicular. Now, these A and B don't have to be perpendicular, but it's just easier to make it out of Lego if it is perpendicular. So if, if I do it like this, then this would be A, well, this would actually be like this, right? A cross B is like that. So A, B, A cross B. And this would be like this, A, B, B cross A, and now it comes out. So, you know, I, we're going to use things like this a lot, and, and this is the same as your right-hand rule. So the one of the rules that people use is this. You'll notice that it looks just like that. So in this case, this is A cross B is equal to C. So then you can rotate around and see which way it should go. So if I have A and B, and then my thumb would be like that. It takes practice. You're just going to have to practice. Okay. Um, so that's the cross product. Let's talk about why we care about the cross product. We care about the cross product because of this. This is the definition of the magnetic field due to a moving charge. So this is some magnetic constant. This is the charge times the velocity. That's very important because if you have a negative charge, the direction of this is in the opposite direction of the velocity vector. And this is the vector r from the point to where you want to find the electric charge. And so this is a cross product. Okay. Um, so you can do you can find the direction of the magnetic field with this. So let's do that. So let's do a, a simple case. So I'm going to have a positive charge. So Q is positive and it's moving into the board. So that's V. So the velocity is in that way. And I want to find the magnetic field right here. So there's my vector R. Okay, so in this case, uh, QV is down, right? Because this is a positive charge and V is into the board. And then R is that way. So if I want to say B equals mu naught over 4 pi QV cross R over R cubed, don't worry about the magnitude. We just want to find the direction. What's the direction of QV cross R? Well, I want to use my right hand rule. See, I'm using my right. I put down my pen. Did you notice that? I put down the pen. I want to use my right hand and take QV and then cross through R. So let's just first find the two options that we could have for the for this vector. So these are the two vectors that would be perpendicular to both QV and R, right? Because this is perpendicular and it's perpendicular to this because that's going into the paper. So now I just need to pick which one of those. It kind of helps if you preemptively pick those two vectors. So if I do this, if I do this way, I'm going to cross QV and then come up and cross R. Right. If I did this way, I'd cross R and then QV. So this is the answer right here. So B would be, I'm sorry, it's down over here. B is this way. Okay. Now, what if I pick another point over here? Here's R. Well, in this case, it's going to be one of those two directions. Well, let me put it like this. So now I can do QV cross R. And again, I get, I get this way. So it's like this. And then if I do over here, I get that. If I do over here, I get that. And you'll notice that it makes this circular pattern of a ma magnetic field. That's kind of useful because it in introduces our second version of the right-hand rule. They're all the same. If I put my thumb 
of my right hand in the direction of QV, then my fingers show the direction the magnetic field curls around. Okay. So if you think of this circular thing, and I actually made a little prop here. I'm not sure how well this works. So here's a, a little piece of uh, PVC, and I put arrows to show the direction of the magnetic field, and the, this nails the direction of QV. So in this case, it's like this, and you can see the arrows are going around that way. If, the, if it was a negative charge, QV would be like this, and so I would get the magnetic field going in the opposite direction. So this is one of those right-hand rules. This works for QV cross B, but it also works for the magnetic field due to a long wire. So we, they just write this usually as a scalar, mu naught over 2 pi r i. So if you put your thumb in the direction of i, the conventional current, then your fingers will rotate around in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay. So if I have a long wire, say here's my wire, I put my thumb in this direction, and this shows me the direction of the magnetic field wrapping around. It has that same pattern, though. Of course, as since uh, this is 1 over r cubed, as you get further and further away, the magnitude decreases, but it still makes that circular pattern. Well, in this case, it's that way. Okay, so then there's one more right-hand rule. Oh, there's actually two. I'm going to show you two more right-hand rules. Uh, the other one is this. The, mag the force on a moving charge is QV cross B. Uh, that's the same thing uh, as, as this, right? QV cross B F. So if that's the force, that's Q and QV and that's B. So you know, I've, I tell my students if they want to make some three-dimensional uh, representation like this and, and write QV F, I mean QV B and F, that's fine. Uh, I've even seen people write it on their hands, QV uh, B and F with their right hand. That's fine. I don't really care. I mean, for me, I don't mind. Um, some faculty may, so you, you should be caution. Use caution. Um, there is one other um, right-hand rule that comes up, and it looks like this. What if I have uh, a loop of current like this, I? Uh, it turns out that the magnetic field in the, min in the middle can be found with the right-hand rule, too. So if you put your hand in the direction of the current for this loop, your thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field in the middle. And so it's the same as the, the magnetic field due to wire, and so you can still use this. So now I put my fingers in the direction of the current, which would be this way, and then my thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so that's the right-hand rule. I know it's very confusing. I hope that helps. Uh, you just need to practice. It's really hard to show in 2D. This is a 2D video, um, but but just keep practicing uh, with a bunch of different problems, and you'll you'll eventually get it. Uh, but but remember, put down the pen. Unless you're left-handed, then don't. Okay, so that's my advice. Hope that helps.